But we begin tonight with Donald Trump, the Republican frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination. The party has put all of their chips behind this man, who was found liable for violating E. Jean Carroll physically and for defaming her. He's accused of falsifying records to silence an adult film star he allegedly had an affair with. His company was found guilty of defrauding New York taxpayers. He's accused of stealing American secrets, carting them off to his mansion in Florida, lying about it to the FBI, and blabbing about those state secrets to anyone who would listen. He stands accused of fomenting a violent coup to try and overturn the 2020 election. He and his family took in billions of dollars from countries like Saudi Arabia and China while he was president. And if that's not enough, he delivered the death blow to reproductive rights for every woman in America. That is the resume of the likely Republican nominee. To say that this man is at his moment of maximum legal and electoral peril is an understatement. To make the point even more explicit, Donald John Trump is facing serious repercussions, including financial liquidation and potential time behind bars. But RNC chair Donna Ronna Romney McDaniel and VP wannabe Elise Stefanik are circling the wagons around him anyway. According to Jake Sherman of Punchbowl News, Congresswoman Stefanik, a former George W. Bush staffer and Paul Ryan aide, walked into a closed House Republican meeting, waving a Rasmussen poll, which is notoriously right wing leaning, and proclaimed Trump the winner of the nomination and probably the election, despite Nikki Haley still being in the race stating that all House Republicans should bend the knee to their emperor. These people are so committed to Trump. He's been able to get two of his super PACs funded by donations from his working class fans to pay for his legal defense to the tune of $50 million, according to two sources who spoke with The New York Times. We talk about this every day. But it's not really surprising that everyone within his party is making his reelection their only priority. Congressional Republicans have completely capitulated to him and given up on their primary professional responsibility, which is delivering tangible things for an evenly divided America that really did elect Joe Biden in 2020. Yet what have House Republicans accomplished with their majority? Well, they've launched an impeachment inquiry into President Biden and an investigation of his son. They've heard from witnesses behind closed doors who repeatedly told them that Joe Biden did nothing wrong and contradicted the whole premise of their investigation. They continue to push their anti-abortion tactics, scrounging for ways to force women in red and blue states to give birth at the state's command, even if they've been victims of incest or rape. And they are all in on scaring their voters about immigration and the southern border, the issue that many say fueled Trump's 2016 election and returned to the 2018 midterms, the 2022 midterms, and the upcoming elections in November. For months, House Republicans have insisted that they could only support aid to Ukraine if it was paired with tougher border security. They've accused Biden of not doing enough. And when he called their bluff and agreed to do more, they waffled. Because Donald Trump doesn't want anybody, especially Joe Biden, to sign something that would actually work to solve a problem. Speaker Johnson says that whatever the former president wants, he gets. And that includes a long-promised impeachment of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas the first time in nearly 150 years that the House will try to remove a member of the president's cabinet. Republicans in the hearing, which is ongoing, are accusing him of dereliction of duty after he spent weeks negotiating a bipartisan immigration deal that House Republicans are rejecting out of hand. Make it make sense, people. Long story short, it's politics. Your own party is sabotaging and undermining this administration's efforts to address the border while you are trying to impeach him by saying that they're not addressing the border. The hypocrisy is the least of it. Your attack on the rule of law and our democracy is the worst of it. And you better be careful about the bed that you make. The Donald Trump and MAGA plan is alligator moats, bombing northern Mexico, shooting migrants in the legs, and electrifying the fence and putting spikes on them. That is the Donald Trump border plan. This is all about trying to get Donald Trump reelected. I think another saying uh, appropriately describes what's going on here, and that's just shoveling the same old shit and calling it sugar. And that's not what the people want us to do. 
Joining me now is Congressman Robert Garcia of California, member of the House Homeland Security and Oversight Committees, and Matthew Dowd, former Republican strategist and MSNBC senior political analyst. Thank you both for being here. Congressman, I will start with you here at the table. I'm going to play you one more soundbite. This is Marjorie Taylor Greene explaining why uh, Secretary Mayorkas must be impeached. The claims aren't baseless. Uh, Secretary Mayorkas has willfully broken federal immigration laws. He's also violated his oath of office. We have a record number of children, migrant children, who are lost in this country. Also, he ended many policies. He's paroling people by the millions en masse into our country. Instead of coming to Congress, we are the lawmakers. We make the laws. Secretary Mayorkas, on his own, has violated federal immigration law. Your thoughts? Have millions of people been paroled into the United States? What is she talking about? I mean, first, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is insane. And uh, this whole impeachment effort is the Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump show. It's been Marjorie Taylor Greene that's actually the one that's filed both the impeachment documents on President Biden and, of course, on, on Secretary Mayorkas. And so this is all because of her. She's pushing this, and she's taking Donald Trump's orders. The truth that people forget is that migration has been going up when the Donald Trump presidency started. In the last year of the Donald Trump presidency, migration increased threefold. And that's because of all the crises happening in Venezuela, sure. and Ecuador, acro across the Southern Hemisphere. And so we do have a challenge at the border. Yeah. Democrats do actually want to solve the issue. The president has proposed solutions, but Donald Trump is now saying he doesn't want a bill. He doesn't want more he border wants to funding. Run on it. He wants to run on it. He wants to create chaos and dysfunction. Yeah. And we're trying to push back on that. We actually need a solution. He wants none. So you you said that uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, is behind the impeachments of President Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas. Let me read you some of the other impeachments. Let me know who's doing these besides those two. Uh, there's uh, apparently the Republicans would like to impeach Kamala Harris. Uh, they would like to impeach, uh, uh, of course, uh, Secretary Mayorkas. Uh, Merrick Garland of uh, the DOJ, they'd like to impeach FBI Director Christopher Wray, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Uh, that's a lot of impeachments. Who's, who is it that wants to impeach this entire group of people? And they want to impeach Taylor Swift, even though she's not in, in the government. If they could. <laughs> they could. Clearly. I mean, look, first of all, I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene is, beha is behind, like, most of those. But yeah. this is the far-right MAGA wing that's taken over the Republican Party. I mean, they have essentially been given the keys to the entire clown show, and that's Marjorie Taylor Greene, it's Matt Gates, it's Lauren Boebert, who run the show. Mike Johnson has no ability to control his conference. He knows that. He wants to keep the speakership. Yeah. So he's providing these opportunities for them to get crazy. That's it, what they continue is to Is it do. as simple as Donald Trump is mad that he got impeached twice, so he just wants impeachment attached to Joe Absolutely. Biden somehow? I mean, okay. not only does he want an impeachment for Joe Biden, yeah. he wants to create a real election issue. He wants to win. Everything the Republicans do in the House, including yeah. this impeachment effort against the secretary, is all about helping Donald Trump yeah. and hurting Joe Biden. Uh, Matthew, Dad, let me bring you in here, because you live in Texas. Because the, the other side of this is that one of the strategies apparently that Donald Trump has to try to win is to essentially stoke a war between the state of Texas and the federal government. You've had Republican governors essentially daring the federal government to do what the federal government is authorized by the Constitution to do, which is enforce immigration laws. You've got these, you know, barbed wire fences across the Rio Grande because there's water. You can't build a wall. And so they're just putting barbed wire fences. People are drowning in them. They're saying you can't stop people from drowning. Children are drowning. This idea that Donald Trump needs an actual civil war to get reelected. Your thoughts as a Texan? Well, well, first of all, I mean, I mean, one of the things I'm amazed at is this is all being led by people that claim they're Christians. That's actually what's amazing sure. to me. These people that put on the mantle of Christianity, I guess they skipped every single passage in the Bible that talks about how we treat immigrants in the course of this. They just forgot all that and they mm -hmm. concentrate on part of the Old Testament that they think is applicable to them. I mean, this is Donald Trump. This is his playbook. We've seen this in the history of our country before. Every time something happens, they want to blame it on somebody else, and it's usually pick the other. It was African-Americans for centuries. It was Latinos for centuries. It was Chinese-Americans for decades. It's Now it's just this new band of, like, let's blame the immigrants for the problems of our country, and therefore we're going to identify somebody that doesn't look like us. The thing that I find interesting in this, all these people for pushing for Texas seceding and becoming a separate country, I think are, about, are putting on the pause button because they've realized they may lose their Social Security checks <laughs> if they do that in the course of this, which is actually like, whoa, wait, wait a sec, maybe we shouldn't do this. I'm going to lose the check I get for the federal government every month in the course of this. But this is, to me, an awful poisonous part of our nation's history 
that Donald Trump has dug back up and given and given power to, and that is aim the aim every one of your problems at an immigrant. Yeah. And and hope you know, let me play for you because the, the way that it's being described, and first of all, I would love for you to explain since you know you 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 know lots of Republicans, why anyone would want to be vice president to Donald Trump when the last vice president he actually was cool with that guy being hung. But nonetheless, they persist. Uh, here's one of the aspirants to that job, that very dangerous job, Tim Scott. And I, I, I just want you all to listen to the way he described the Trump era and why people like him want to get back to it. You know, myself and all the voters that support uh, Donald Trump supports a return to normalcy as it relates to what affects their kitchen table. The average person in our country, Martha, isn't, they're not talking about lawsuits. As a matter of fact, what I have seen, however, is that the perception that the legal system is being weaponized against Donald Trump is actually increasing his poll numbers. So he, he described the Trump era as normalcy, Matthew. And... He was being asked if he, why he can support someone who's been adjudicated a sexual assaulter and is, is you know owes eighty three point three million dollars to the person he defamed. Well, I mean, the, the, the fundamental thing problem here is the complete lack of courage by anybody in the Republican Party. They have to twist themselves into pretzels in order to come up with a rationale of why something applies to Joe Biden or the Democrats but doesn't apply to Donald Trump or the Republicans in the course of this.